Hello everybody, hope you all are fine. Today's topic for discussion is bones. The second lecture of this series about skeleton. At the end of this session, the participant should be able to define bone, give the biochemical composition of the bone tissue, describe the bone tissues that is spongy and compact types, give the differences between compact and spongy bone tissues, tabulate the developmental types of bones with their characteristics, describe external and internal characteristics of a long bone, and finally, explain features of a few special bones like flat bones and pneumatic bones, including mastoid air cells and paranasal sinuses with special stress on the sinusitis. Bone is a living, rigid, but resilient highly vascular and dynamic, that is constantly changing specialized form of dense connective tissue. As regard the bone composition, it consists of number one, an outer layer of dense substance, which is named as compact bone. It is also named as cortex. It is covered over by a fibrocellular layer the periosteum. Second is an inner layer of loose spongy substance which is lined internally by a vascular connective tissue layer which is named as endosteum. It is to be noted that proportion of compact and spongy bone in it in a bone is present as per requirement of the area in which the bone is present. Number three, a central portion which is present in the shape of an elongated canal in long bones and it contains bone marrow. As regard the bone tissue, there are two types, compact or cortical bone and spongy or tenseless bone. Bone consists of about 50% water and 50% solid matter. Among the solids, 25 to 30% are organic material. Among the organic material, 30% are made up of collagen proteins and the 7 to 10% are non-collagenous proteins. 65 to 70% of the solids are inorganic material in the shape of hydroxyapatite, composed of chiefly calcium and inorganic phosphates, which are de deposited among the collagen fibers. About the matrix, this part of the bone has got unique chemical mechanical properties because of presence of fibrous element which impart resilience to the bone tissue. Number two, presence of mineral salt make it hard and because of this bone becomes more resistant to compression forces. Contents of the matrix provide special regenerating capacity and characteristic growth pattern of the bone tissue. Fine structure of the bone tissue varies widely with age and location of the bone. Now we start with the bone tissue. First the compact bone. As regard the macrostructure of the compact bone tissue, it looks as ivory-like dense, white, and solid 
bone tissue and is limited to the outer part of the bone which is named as cortex it has got supreme importance for strength of the bone its thickness varies according to the overall shape and functional role of the bone it consists of immense amount of solid matter in the shape of spicules and trabeculae with almost non existent spongy tissue that is intertubercular trabecular spaces as regard the microstructure it is a highly organized arrangement of concentric circles or rings which look like but tree trunks and is named as an osteon which consists of specific bone cells and intercellular substance the matrix the vertian system is composed of a series of tubes around narrow channels formed by lamellae represented by an osteon which is the basic structural unit of the bone tissue it is composed of three components number 1 is the matrix which is present in the shape of concentric rings hence are also named as concentric avertian lamellae each lamellae is made of collagen fibers impregnated with calcium phosphate and surrounded by mineralized ground substance which is rich in calcium and phosphate one notable point is that collagen fibers of adjacent lamellae run at perpendicular angle to each other which allows osteons to resist twisting forces in multiple directions second component are the osteocytes which are trapped within the lacuni and these lacuni are embedded in between the lamellae and are arranged in circles around the central canal notable thing is that lacuni are connected with adjacent lacuni through canaliculi and eventually with central canal and serve the purpose of transport of nutrients and waste products third component is the central canal which is also named as haversian canal and lodges the neurovascular bundle the deficit between the regular or concentric lamellae especially on the surface of the bone is occupied by relatively irregular lamellae which are named as circumferential lamellae second type of bone tissue is spongy or cancellous bone macroscopically it appears as a honeycomb and consists of spicules and trabeculae with intercommunicating spaces among them such a structure make them lighter which provide balance to dense and heavy compact bone hence muscles can move these bones more easily spongy bone tissue is located especially at the ends of the long bone and in bodies of the vertebrae the trabeculae of the spongy bone are covered by endosteum hence they can readily remodel them trabeculae appear to be present as a random network but they form a specific arrangement along lines of stress which provides strength to the cortex again against compressional forces trabeculae also provide protection 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 to the red bone marrow microscopically aversion lamellae are not arranged in a regular manner and no 
typical aversion system is present. Now let us compare the compact, compact and spongy bone tissue. First the compact bone tissue. It has got regular aversion system with no spaces among the trabeculae. Hence there is no red bone marrow. There is an elongated central canal or cavity which have got yellow bone marrow, the inactive type of bone marrow. As compared to this one, the spongy bone tissue have got irregularly irregular trabeculae with intertrabecular species. These species contain red bone marrow or the active bone marrow. But there is no central canal or cavity in spongy type of bone tissue. Now we start with cross features of the long bone. Long bones are present as an elongated tubular structures with having the following parts. Number one, shaft, which is also named as diaphysis, is present as a thick, hard, air, and very strong cylindrical shaped structure, which have got usually three borders and three surfaces. One of these surfaces have got nutrient foramen in the middle. Second part is the ends of the bone, that is two ends, which are also named as epiphyses. These are the expanded smooth convex or concave articular surfaces which are covered with hyaline cartilage. Metaphysis is the part that lies between epiphyses and diaphyses and represent the remnant of the growth plate cartilage. On longitudinal section ends in the center have got spongy bone tissue with red bone marrow and is covered over by a thin layer of compact bone. And this surface is covered over by periosteum except the articular surfaces which are covered by articular cartilage for articulation. Longitudinal of this section shows periosteum at the surface and the wall is made up of ivory-like thick hard compact bone is internally lined with endosteum and have got a central cavity or canal which contains yellow bone marrow and this cavity is also named as marrow cavity. Periosteum is a fibrocellular richly vascular membrane which is fused with the underlying bone by bundles of collagen fibers named as fibers of Sharpe. In young bones, two layers can be identified. Inner cellular which contains osteogenic cells and is capable of forming, forming new bone as in repair after fracture. Outer layer of the periosteum is fibrous and it conveys blood vessels and nerves. In older age, osteogenic layer is reduced. The periosteum is innervated by nerves of the overlying muscles and skin. When it is innervated by skin nerves, it becomes more sensitive and the example is shin of the tibia. Endosteum is innermost lining of the cortex, present in the shape of a thin layer of highly condensed areolar tissue and is serviced by a layer of cells. Number three, medullary or marrow cavity. It is an elongated central space in the shaft of a long bone. It is filled with yellow bone marrow 
and is present in all the long bones except clavicle and ribs. Bone marrow is a highly cellular hemopoietic tissue which fills the intertrabecular spaces in the spongy bone tissues. It comes predominantly fatty with age. There are two types. First one is the yellow bone marrow. It is present as a yellow gelatinous fibro fatty tissue, which is actually the inactive bone marrow. This type of bone marrow is present in the marrow cavities of the lungs bone, that is shafts of the lung bones. Second type is red bone marrow, which is present as red gelatinous hemopoietic active tissue is present in the intertrabecular species of the spongy bones that is ends of the long bones bodies of the vertebrae sternum and flat bones of the skull general surface features of the bone are present in different shapes and markings these Characteristics are determined by genetic, metabolic, and mechanical factors, such as attachment of muscle, tendon, and ligaments. They produce different types of markings, which are dependent upon the density of collagen fibers involved. Number two, muscles are attached either directly with least connective tissue. When such is the case, there is usually no apparent marking or they get attached through variable amount of connective tissue in the shape of tendon and ligament. Then they produce different types of markings, especially during puberty and adulthood. Another surface feature is nutrient foramen, which is an apparent foramen in middle of the shaft of a long bone, and it leads into a canal, which is directed away from the growing end of a long bone. The nutrient foramen and canal serves the passage for nutrient vessels and nerves. When arteries come in contact with the bone, they produce smooth surface grooves only. Now let us have a review of a few of the special bones. First one are the flat bones. A flat bone have got an outer thick layer of compact bone which is lined on its external surface by the fibrocellular periosteum and an inner thin layer of compact bone which is lined internally by a fibrous endosteum. There is a cent wide central layer or zone made up of spongy bone with red bone marrow. In nasal region, this layer becomes absorbed and lead to production of air-filled spaces, the paranasal sinuses. There are no epiphyses or diaphyses in flat bones. Second group is pneumatic bones. These are the bones which have got air-filled cavities and are present in the skull. There are two types. One, the cavities which are without mucus lining and the second one is with mucous membrane lining. First, the first group without mucous membrane lining is represented by mastoid air cell. These are numerous small intercommunicating cavities located in mastoid process of the temporal bone and open into middle ear cavity. They may contain bone marrow, especially at the tip of the mastoid process. If these air cells are infected, the condition is named as mastoid ditus. Now the second group 
paranasal sinuses. These are air filled spaces present in the skull around the nasal cavity and are lined with respiratory epithelium and they open into the nasal cavity. There are four pairs according to their location in which bone they are present in maxillary, frontal, sphenoidal and ethmoidal. They are lined by respiratory mucous membrane with mucus secreting globlet cells. These bones decrease skull weight. They produce resonance of voice. They humidify and heat the inhaled air and also facilitate the immune response. If any of the paranasal sciences is become infected, it is named as sinusitis. A sinusitis is inflammation of the epithelial lining of the sinuses. It is a very common condition and most frequently affected sinus is the maxillary sinus. Sinusitis produces nasal congestion, nasal secretions, facial pain and tenderness. And this condition may linger on for up to four weeks. Sinusitis is usually treated with antibiotics, antihistamines, and painkillers. Comments and suggestions will be welcomed. Thank you for listening and watching.